My thoughts, okay, higher. Mm -hmm. So uh, during the Loop Forum 2023, mm -hmm. one of the biggest issues that came up was the slow implementation of policies mm -hmm. uh, with regards to climate change. Is there anything that has changed, and can we see uh, policies now being fast tracked and being implemented mm -hmm. for manufacturers? Yeah, um, uh, during last year's um, Loop, the Waste Management Act had not been passed yet. So it was still a delay on that side, but the strategies were already being implemented and the policy was out. Um, also, there was a review of the water policy um, and the SDG platform that was looking at integrating SDGs into uh, you know, government work and private sector work. And also the Climate Change Act was undergoing a review in how then it can be uh, implemented the guide the regulations were not out they're still not out so there's still a lot of discussion on that the waste management regulations are still not out but we are actively engaged in developing the regulations so that they are pro-business they are not hindering uh, uh, circular solutions for instance moving waste from one uh, uh, factory to the next factory used to cost money which was not necessary um, you have to pay for the waste and we're looking at how do we encourage people to buy waste from each other so that they can use it as a resource. So some of those um, uh, policies, um, now we are consolidating them to make them work uh, for business and also for the Kenyan communities. We also hosted the Africa Climate Summit and we've seen a lot of commitment from even the head of state on um, commitments on driving climate actions in Kenya and leading Africa in terms of how we collaborate and drive um, sustainability within the African continent. We are looking at our current generation, but we are also cognizant that our children also need a safe place to innovate, a safe place to live, and the rest of the generation. So really, it's our collective responsibility for all. Mm. How achievable uh, is the 2050 goal mm -hmm. for the country? Because uh, as you've said, the Climate Change Act is still undergoing uh, some reviews. And mm. There are certain things that need to be put in place. Yeah. But right now, as a country, mm. are we in line to meet mm. our, our SDG goals and our mm -hmm. carbon goals by 2050? First, you know, as a country, compared to the global world, we our emission is not that high. And also when you look at um, some of the opportunities we've created through policies and also skills development, building capacity of businesses and even citizens, we are making very good progress as a country. And I believe we shall achieve those goals. In terms of carbon footprint, a lot of companies are coming out to be assessed and uh, understanding how they play within the supply chain. And we've seen uh, technologies, digital capabilities being built to enhance the way we do business and the way we interact even as citizens from government side with their e-citizen platforms, e-teams and others to private sector. You've seen also innovation around electric vehicles, e-mobility, electric motorcycles. So there's a major drive to make sure that we are eliminating uh, air pollution and we are really um, taking care of the environment in the way we think around our solutions. Um, there's also uptake of renewable energy. If you look at the national grid, we have a 90% green now and uh, we're just looking at making it sustainable in terms of quality and access. And at the same time, we're looking for sustainable tariffs because cost of energy is also quite high. But we know our tariffs are sustainable. We are looking at bringing it down as we improve on things like geothermal power as our base load. So there are many opportunities for going green and investors can comfortably come to Kenya just by virtue of saying our grid is green. Yes. Yeah, and many other practices at business level. Uh, that we are incorporating to make sure that uh, people are more conscious of responsible use of natural resources and how we consume products responsibly, how we dispose them, and so that you are not producing for necessarily disposal, you are producing for recycling, for reuse, or for upcycling, like I mentioned. Yeah. And sector by sector, there are so many opportunities for closing that loop. Yeah. Uh, lastly, as we finish, our uh, private sector has mm -hmm. a key role to play mm -hmm. uh, with regards to uh, the fight against climate change. Mm -hmm. Are there any initiatives that mm -hmm. the Kenyan or the country is likely to benefit from this forum today? Yes. Um, in Kenya and even through CAM, we have the Center for Green Growth and Climate Change and also our environmental committee that at the board level where we are driving climate action. We were the first to launch um, uh, PETCO, which is uh, a plastic recycling organization and later we changed it to packaging, a we produce a responsibility company. We also uh, launched uh, Kepro, you've seen here, 
the Kenya uh, Packaging Res Producer Responsibility Organization, just to bring together a coalition of people in the same sector to bring about innovations on how we handle waste. Um, we've also launched, uh, we are about to launch for hazardous waste, for e waste, you know, computers, phones, what we really are struggling on how to remodernize them. And we've seen it in Europe, um, the Dan Danish, the Netherlands people, they are recycling phones, the US, a lot of Kenyans are buying phones from the US already, you know, which are revamped laptops and such. And it can also happen here in Kenya, uh, just, you know, rebooting and, you know, changing some of the spare parts. But we're also encouraging from design stage how uh, manufacturers and other producers can design with that knowledge in mind, either for long-term use. You remember some of our parents, they kept, so, you know, like sofas for many years. They were not going bad. That was part of circular economy. You don't make things to break the next day. They can stay long. I had just given an example of um, also wedding dresses. Kenyans have learned, you know, I don't need to spend 100K, my cousin 100,000, somebody else. So we are reusing wedding dresses because you wear once probably, um, even if you wear twice, really, in a lifetime. So that 100,000, many people can use it for 10,000. And that 10,000 is just for maintenance, laundry, what, and a little profit for that work. So it's that simple as well, making sure we are not wasting. If you are coming to town, you can find in one home four cars have left a homestead, which is not necessary. Yeah, people can carpool, and we are looking also working on rapid transport system uh, and supporting government to look at populated areas. The railway lines came in, but still we find that there's over-reliance on personal vehicles, which increases the cost of fuel per person. Unlike Europe where, you know, and the number of people using public transport is much larger. So cost per person is quite low. So we'll always cry cost of fuel when there really is high cost all over the world. But it's also our models of transport that we need to look at. Cycling to work and such. So I know some areas they are creating cycling paths, but there's so much in this green story. And we welcome Kenyans to begin to understand it and to look for opportunities to have solutions. Young people, I encourage them. These are places for new jobs to just be a greenfield, new innovations. And um, a lot of people don't even know what to do with their waste. If you innovate around it, you'll be so surprised at how you can get very good uh, business models and begin to be meaningfully engaged in this country. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Thank you.